Jeff, when did you get in? How long are you here for? I don't know. You'll certainly be surprised. He's great. He's doing fine. Well, he's grown a lot since then. Yeah. Okay. What's your number? Morning, sweetheart. Time to get up. Let's go. Where are you? Come out, come out wherever you are. Mmm, you're happy. Mmm, see you later. Don't get too dirty. Off to smack you silly. Some of the best for me. Great. This is the ER patient, all right? Let's put her in bed four. Everybody take a seat, please. Take a seat. Who's that? He's from my collection. Boy, is he a beauty. Worms are my life. Worms are your life, huh? What about Horace? Can I help you? Sure. Yeah. Put your names right up at the top of your paper, nice and neatly. Kessel. Kessel. Hello there, Horace. Does Horace look hungry? Yep, I think he looks hungry. Well, here you go. Take your pick. Yeah. Ready? 
An ambulance is on its way, dear. Have you taken your nitro? Are you sitting down? He came in last night. Car accident, no seat belt. Chest trauma with edema. I drove 50 cc's a little while ago. Bill, you hang in there. You're gonna be okay. And how are you doing? Oh, he's back. Dad? For how long this time? For good. He took a staff job with the Herald. No more surprise Santa Claus dropping in bearing gifts. Abby, did you call the pharmacy for room three's dopamine? Yes. He took a pay cut and quit his job with the wire service. Says he misses being a daddy. Oh, poor thing. Oh, what kills me is his timing. Just when I get all together after two and a half years, and Willie and I finally have some semblance of order in our lives, he shows up here. Why can't Daddy spend time with me here? Because your Daddy wants you to see his house. Remember before when you couldn't go to Daddy's house because he lived too far away? Well, Daddy lives close by now. Maybe you could come, too. Oh, really? Now, you always have a good time at Daddy's house. What am I going to eat? Well, you're going to eat at home. You're going to be home in time for supper. What happened to Daddy's house in New York? He sold it so it could be close to you. Isn't that nice? Remember when you never knew when you were going to see Daddy? Well, now you can spend time with him as much as you want. Well, maybe he doesn't want to spend time with me. Of course he does, Willie. Your daddy loves you very, very much. But not as much as you. Your daddy and mommy both love you very much. It's not a contest, OK? You're being silly. You're being very, 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 very silly. Good boy. <laughs> Hey, buddy. How you doing? Give me five back. <laughs> you look great. You ready? Hi, Abby. Welcome back. Hey, Dad, do you want to see my room collection? Um, I don't know. Maybe some other time, okay? We got to get going. Ready? Bye, Mom. Have a good time. See you later. How do you like the first grade? Fine. Who's your teacher? Mr. Donovan. You like him? Mm-hmm. You know, when you smoke, it gets in other people, too. I could get cancer. Did your mother tell you that? Mr. Donovan told us at school. How's that? You're supposed to use an ashtray. You're right. We got a surprise for you. A dog! Yeah, his name is Zeke. Hi. Hey, that's your stepmom. Hi, Willie. You'll love Ben and Sarah. Whenever you come over here, you'll always have a brother and sister to play with. Isn't that great? Willie, would you like to take your sweater off? No, thank you. 
Am I supposed to call you Mrs. Foreman? Because my mom's name is Mrs. Foreman. You can just call her Claire for now, OK? Willie, this is my daughter, Sarah. Hi, Willie. Have soda. My mom doesn't like me to have sugar. Maybe I could have diet. I don't touch those. Hey, 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 take it easy, will you, Ben? I'm not hurting them. Here. Willie, this is Ben. He's your stepbrother. Hi. So is it a nice house? Yeah, and you know what? They got a dog named Zeke. Zeke? He's really Sarah's, but I can play with him. Hmm. Who's Sarah? Claire's girl, and her boy is Ben. What's a stepbrother? Who's Claire? The lady that Daddy's married to now. I beg your pardon? Daddy says she's my stepmother, but I call her Claire. Uh, <laughs> ah! Come here. No! Come here. <laughs> Someone's at the door! Huh? That was the doorbell. No, oh, I thought it was me. the mess, but um, I'm glad you came. I wondered how long it would be until I got to meet you. Well, I would have been here sooner if I had known you existed. Somehow Ted forgot to mention it. Well, I think he wanted to tell Willie himself instead of having him hear about it from someone else. Uh, please, sit down. Ted always was lousy at communication. It must have been hard for you with Ted so far away. Willie needed a father. It's been hard on Ben and Sarah since their dad was transferred to Atlanta. How long have you and Ted been together? We only have been married six months, but we've been serious for more than a year. Ted never even mentioned you. But then that's Ted. I'm sorry. I'm bad-mouthing your new husband. I didn't mean to do that. I really would like us to start off on the right foot. I gotta give myself this. I sure know how to pick them. One question, Ted. Is there anything else I should know? I really don't want to have any more surprises. Should I leave? No, no, stay. Let's talk about Willie, okay? What I had in mind since you and I both agreed to joint custody was... That was three years ago. But I'm here now, and I'm more than willing to play my part. For the past two years, life has gone on without you here. I've been here. I've seen him. I've spent time. I've never missed a child support payment, never even been late. For which I am grateful. But you can't turn a child off and on like a water faucet. You show up out of the blue, and then you disappear into the blue, leaving behind a broken-hearted little boy. Uh, Ted, Abby has a point. Willie needs time to get used to this. Why don't we start with little bites? What about every other weekend? That's what Ben and Sarah's dad and I worked out. Every other weekend? How about every afternoon after school? You're not even home. What if Ted picks Willie up from school on Thursdays and drops him off on Monday mornings? Every other weekend? That's four days. That is a long time for a six-year-old boy who has barely spent one night away from home. I'm his father. We've been through this before. We know how it works. I'll have to think about it. Dabra, Kadabra, sticks and stones. Glitter toad and wizard toad. And then the wizard takes his potion and gives it to the little spider. When I count to three, you will become. A stepmother. One, two, three. Hi. <laughs> Great timing. Hi, Marge. You ready to go, Wills? Can I stay? We're in the middle of a story. Oh, not this evening, sweetheart. You wanted to drop off your bottles, remember? Forty-four cents. Can we stop and buy my Halloween costume? 
I thought you wanted to be a skeleton again. Remember, your costume from last year still fits? I changed my mind. I want to be an astronaut. What changed my mind? What about your bike? Did you forget what you wanted more than anything in the world? Remember about having a goal and working toward it? I still feel scratchy. Extension 214, please. Hi, it's Abby. I've got a sick child here, and I've tried every sitter on my list. Is there any chance you can do without me today? Oh, boy. No, 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 it's OK. I'll figure something out. All right. Hello? Ted, it's Abby. Woody's running a slight fever, and I can't find a sitter. What's your schedule today? Well, I was just on my way out, but Claire's here. Willie's sick. I'll watch him. Uh, can you bring him over? Sure. I really appreciate this. Sure, in fact. I don't get it. How can a nurse who takes care of sick people be too busy to take care of her own son when he's sick? Someone get the car in here, please. Someone get Dr. Klein on the phone. He's on his way. Okay, what do we got? Patients and defib. Okay, stop CPR. Okay, let's go ahead and defibrillate at 200, please. Coming in. Charge. Put the IVs wide. Clear. Check for a pulse. No pulse. Let's go ahead and defibrillate again at 200 watt seconds, please. 200. Coming in. For a pulse? No, no pulse. Looks like the patient has a long history of heart disease. Is that correct? Yes. How long has the patient been down? About five minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and stop CPR, please. Let's go. Fine. His fever broke right after you called last. Can I talk to him? Hang on. Abby, he's taking a nap. Why don't you let him stay the night? You can pick him up in the morning. Hmm. OK, see you then. Bye. Hey. How many cameras do you got? No, nine, ten. When I uh, shoot, I, ha I have to work fast. Here. See that? Can you read the tiny print there at the bottom? Ted, Ted Foreman. That's your name. Yeah, that's my photograph. I took that yesterday. Wow. You know, if I have to change a lens, uh, I might miss the shot. So that's why I have so many cameras. You got to save a long time for so many cameras. Yep, you have to work hard. 7.30. Time for bed. Mommy wants me to have to wait 30. Hey, buddy, I told you, it's not uh, the same at Daddy's house as it is at Mommy's. We have different bedtimes, different rules. Now it's time for you to brush your teeth. Tell me something. How is it I can play with your kids, but with my own son, I feel like an uptight stranger? Well, you sure look like a natural to me. Well, you make it easy. Oh, God, I wish I didn't have to wait for Abby to get permission to see my own son. Give it some time. Mom, Sarah want to use your lipstick for my bloody scar. Sarah doesn't have lipstick. Yes, she does. I'll use mine. Hello? Uh, wait a second. Sarah? Sarah here? 
Touch there. Telephone! with him, Sarah. He's your little brother. Yes, and if I want a little brother, one's enough. Hello? Hello? Who is it? They're gone. I'm going to. I gotta go. I'm late. Bye, honey. Where's Dad? I want to show him. Hey, just what? Willie, sit down and have some breakfast. Got the lunch. How do I look? Well, you look. You look out of this world. Hi, Abby. Where did you get that? Claire made it for me. I hear the bus. Wait, did you get your lunches? Yeah, right here. Bye. Oh, I have Willie's lunch. You sew this? You're so clever. When did you find the time? <laughs> I did it while the kids were in school. Now I got two mommies. <laughs> One, two, and three. Here's the IV, Abby. OK, you can go ahead and start the antibiotics. I hear there's a charge nurse's post opening up. You should apply. Oh, Arthur, I hardly have enough time for Willie as it is. You have to look ahead at where your career is going. What's for dinner is as far ahead as I can look right now. It's Ted, isn't it? No, it's Claire. I'm jealous. She has time to do things for Willie that I don't. There's more than one kind of good mother. And Willie really seems happy with the one he has got. They want to take him four days every other week. I'm going to give it a try, but boy, it seems long for me. It seems you will have more time. And you can apply for that promotion. I sure could use the money. So they'll pick you up after school on Thursday, and you'll spend all weekend at Daddy's house. And on Monday, they'll take you to school again. That means I have to eat there. Well, I think you'll be pretty hungry if you don't. I don't like cooked vegetables. I only like raw. And what if they have something yucky, like string beans? Well, you can always say, I don't care for string beans. Just tell the truth and you'll be OK. What if I miss you and want to come home? You can always pick up the telephone and talk to me. I'm not going. Maybe next week. Oh, Willie. You stayed there the other night and you were just fine. I don't like it there. That's not nice. It's the truth. You said always tell the truth. Thought I'd take you out on assignment with me. What's on assignment? You'll see. Get rid of these for me, will you? You're quitting? I can't promise anything, but I'll try. <laughs> is this where you work? This is where I work today. Tomorrow I'll work someplace new. Come on, it's not going to hurt you. It's part of growing up. Every kid needs a candy bar once in a while. OK? Dad, if you and Claire get divorced, will you ever come back to live with me and Mommy? I'm not getting divorced from Claire. 
Someday you might. Look, before you know it, our house is going to feel like your home, too. It's a feature piece on L.A., you know, like two years after the riots kind of thing. You want the corner of Florence and Normandy, the Rebuild L.A. projects, new markets? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You got it. And uh, this big guy here, his name is Willie. He's my helper. He's going up with us. Hey, what grade are you in? Or did you graduate already? I'm in first. I had to tell his school he was going to the <laughs> dentist. So what do you think? I'm going to be a helicopter driver when I grow up. You're not a photographer? I don't know how to take pictures. Now well, I'm going to teach you, see? We're going to spend a lot of time together. Would you like that? Yes. OK, good. Is that? When we visit our dad, we have to fly on a plane because he lives in a land. We spend summers with him and our baby half-sister. What's a half-sister? She's got the same dad, but a new mom. I hate string beans. Too bad you have to eat it. Just take a few bites. It will make me throw up. Mommy doesn't make me eat yucky stuff. We have different rules here, remember? Yuck, I hate it. Come on, Willie. You don't want Ben to think that you're a baby, do you? I call Mommy. Don't call Mommy. Come on, whatever problems we have in this house, we can solve Ted, right here. Ted, Ted, take it easy. Why shouldn't he call his mom? Can you come pick me up? What's going on, Wills? I don't want to stay here. Willie, you know, it's bedtime. If you go to sleep now, you wake up in the morning, I'll come pick you up. Take me to school? I'll take you to school. Promise? I promise. OK, so if you go to bed right now, first thing you know, it'll be morning, and I'll be there. OK. All right, night, night. But Mommy's coming, and I won't be here. I got lots to do. I, I can't wait. Willie's fine. I'm the basket case. Sarah went off without her homework, and Ted had to drop it off, so he said he'd take Willie, too. By the time they left, Ted was having a heart attack. Well, when he gets his pressure up, watch out. By the way, I'm up for a promotion at the hospital. It may mean working some weekends. Sounds nice. 
Well, it might work out. I'd love to take it. It would be a nice raise, and I'd get to mentor young nurses. Willie will be here half the weekends anyway. Well, go in and put your feet up. You look like you deserve it. Hey, pal. I'm not coming out. I'm not. You can't make me. Yeah, well, just tell me what's wrong, okay? I'm never coming to school again. Willie, did somebody do something to make you mad? She broke her promise. She said she was going to come and pick me up, but she didn't. I hate her. I hate my mother. Well, where is your mother now, Willie? Is she at work? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you come around? We'll give her a call, find out just what happened, okay? Come on, pal. It sounds to me like he's just cranky. I try to get him to bed on time, but he says he usually stays up until 8.30. Hi. Hi, baby. I got here as soon as I could. Where's Ted? He's on assignment. He asked me to cover for him. I was saying I'm a little concerned about Willie. Our eager beaver just has not been himself lately. Well, I'm not surprised. His entire routine has been disrupted. He even called me last night and wanted to sleep at home. Our house is Willie's home, too. Willie was upset today because Ted told him I wasn't coming when he knew that I was. Abby, you can't blame this whole thing on Ted. Oh, I bet she can. Look, kids are amazingly resilient, and they can accept just about anything as long as you level with him. Take Horace. Horace, he's a, a python. And I feed Horace live mice. Now, a lot of mommies have a problem with this, but you know what? Willie understands it, because he knows this is what Horace needs in order to live. That's asking a lot of a first grader. Mm-hmm. So is divorce. His son's a one-man vice squad. I'm trying to give up smoking, and now he's on me about my sugar consumption. Well, his mom's a nurse. What bugs me is he's so insecure. Anytime he doesn't like something, he wants to call his mother. He's a worrier. When she's at work, for him, it's like she disappears. That's right. That's it. That's the big problem. Her work. I mean, it's not this phony baloney about how any change in his routine upsets his fragile equilibrium. The teacher didn't exactly say that. No, in so many words, but that was the gist of it. Sometimes he just breaks my heart. You know, in order to get a bike, he goes through our trash, scavenging cans and bottles to turn in for money so he can buy himself a bike. What? How much does a bike cost? I mean, surely Abby can afford a bike. I'm not having my kids scrounging through trash cans to buy a bike. Slow down. 
Hi. You here alone? No, uh, Billy's watching the lobsters. <laughs> or I should say he's saying goodbye to them. It's kind of morbid, I know. <laughs> Life and death, they're very big topics for first graders. <laughs> yeah. Well, I get enough of it at work. <laughs> so, um, how about dinner? Go out, you and me. They have these places called restaurants. Do you remember, just for grown-ups, go out on a Saturday night. Don't you ever give up? Not without a good reason why you keep turning me down. You're serious? Mm -hmm. I can't go out with my son's teacher. I mean, how can I do that? You just say yes. Thank you. How's Mrs. Maria? Mrs. Maria? Mm. My patient? Do you know her? Willie told us about her in sharing time. She had a triple bypass. Willie talked about her in class? Yeah. Uh, the kids, they love hearing about the hospital. And Willie talks about you all the time, about how you save lives. He does. He's very proud of you. I worry that he's so serious. He asked me if it hurts to die. Hmm. What'd you say? Sometimes it hurts to die. Sometimes it hurts to live, too. Life is full of miracles and beauty and wonder, but it's also full of death and sacrifice and loss. We could, uh, we could stick with the miracles and beauty. There must be a school rule against this. <laughs> Which I plan to break. How can I help it when you're such a shameless flirt? Me? I thought Claire was going to notice you. Oh, I see. And, and you're such a good girl. Up to buy his own bike. He was almost there. How much? And then you go that? and undermine everything he's been working for. Claire, you stay out of this. I'm trying to teach him the value of money, he's of saving, of working toward a goal. He's only six years old. And then you go and take him up in helicopters and buy him bicycles and make him think that money grows on trees. I don't want my son picking out of garbage cans, all right? He's not a scavenger, he's not one of the homeless. As you and that cockamamie teacher. I mean, oh, why should he have to buy his own bike? He's only a little kid. Go on, Ted. You never could stand the heat. You're spoiled. And I'm not going to let you spoil my son. We're going to straighten this out, Abby. Once and for all. No, Mommy, no! I was just going to put it away for you. Willie, you didn't do anything wrong. It's okay for you to have a bike. But what if you... But what are we gonna do with the pennies? Well, I don't know, sweetie. Maybe we could save up for something else. I bet we can. We'll find something, okay? Now, do you think you could get on this bike and ride it back so we can put it away? We gotta get to school. Okay? Okay. I wanted to be the one to tell you. You've got the job. You'll start next month. <laughs> oh, boy. 
What do you mean, old boy? I thought you would be pleased. No, you should be. I am. It's just oh. it isn't the right time. Everything's falling apart right now. I blew up a head this morning in front of Willie. It was awful. There was no excuse for it. You are having a bad day. Oh, Arthur, I'm not. I'm lost. Jobs like this don't come along every day. Go home and celebrate. cranky today? Mm-mm. It's probably because he ate too much sugar. Oh, boy, you think we're gonna be cranky, too? The bananas are good for us. Yeah. Besides, it's a special occasion. Yes, it is. Your mama is gonna be in charge of a lot of nurses. Who is it? Deputy Marshal. It's Marshal. Are you Abby Foreman? Yes. What is it? I have a subpoena and some legal documents. A subpoena? What for? I'm afraid you're going to court, ma'am. <sighs> Sign here, please. I tried to get him to talk to you, to warn you the papers were coming. He wouldn't listen. Does Ted really hate me that much? It's not about you. It's about Willie. But we were working it out. If Ted's not happy with the schedule... He doesn't want Willie to be in daycare. Uh, why not? Willie's been going there since he was a baby. Willie loves Marge. Ted thinks a young child needs to spend more time at home. Ted's not even at home when Willie gets out of school. No, but I am. And with your new job, you'll have even less time for Willie. You agree with him? You want to take my son away from me? I refuse to believe this. We're doing what we think is best for Willie. You can refuse to believe that, too. It happens to be the truth. Willie, your daddy and I are fighting over who gets custody of you. It's not your fault, and it's not up to you to work it out. But I wanted you to know about it in case we have to go to court and let a judge decide who gets custody. What's custody? It means taking care of you. Your daddy wants you to come live with him so he can take care of you. He wants to keep me? Yes. Now he only borrows me? I think that's the way it feels to daddy. Why doesn't he want to share? Kind of like your worms. You know how you like them close by so that you can spend time with them whenever you feel like it? It isn't fair. Daddy already has been Sarah. Yeah, but he's been your daddy since you were born. Just tell me one thing. What, sweetie? Do I gotta move? No. You don't have to move. This is your home. But what if Daddy makes me? Your daddy loves you, Willie. He doesn't want to hurt you. I wish I was twins. Oh. 
Okay. Night, night. You sleep well. Thanks for coming. I just had to talk to someone. Yeah. I'm glad you called me. Do you want a glass of wine? A beer or something? Yeah, that'd be great. I'm going to be a helicopter driver. Not a photographer? Oh, I hate to say this, sweetheart, but I think you'd better see a lawyer. That'll only escalate things. Believe me, I've been there. Once the legal system gets hold of you, it chews you up and spits you out into small pieces. Uh, then let me help. You can't take Ted on by yourself. Maybe I can talk to him. I'd rather Ted not know about us till this is all over. Oh, yes, Claire. Aren't you entitled to have somebody on your side? Ted wants to control me. That's what this whole thing is all about. Ugh. Willie, what are you doing up? <clears throat> Hi, Mr. Donovan. Well, hi there. Ta-da! It's me, Dad. This is so cool. Can I take it home to show Mommy? You know how smart you are? How smart? Well, you're smart enough to go to the same school as Ben and Sarah, which you could do if you came and lived with me. Are my pictures done yet? <sighs> From developer. To fixer, from the fixer into the bath. The bath? <laughs> yep. Just like the one for little boys. I'm still a little too dark. It's Mommy. Mommy? Who's the guy with Mommy? That's Mr. Donovan. Who's Mr. Donovan? Don't you remember? He's my teacher. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. Daddy says you care more about your job than about me. Well, Daddy's wrong. He says that if you love me, you'd stay home with me. Daddy works and he still loves you. But Daddy has to work to pay for things. Well, honey, Mama has to work to pay for things, too. If Daddy gave you some money, would you stop working? Remember Mrs. Murillo? The lady who almost died? Mm-hmm. Well, who would take care of her and all the other sick people at the hospital? There's Dr. Arthur. Willie, I need for you to understand something. This is very important, okay? Okay. I need for you to understand that Mommy's work is just as important as Daddy's work. Can you understand that? It's hard. Would it help if I quit my job? Well, the petition specifically mentions her work in a demanding, stressful occupation that interferes with her ability to give adequate parental supervision and attention to minor child. Surely a judge would not take a little boy away from his mother just because she works. That's true. According to California law, that cannot be the only factor. But they'll have a list of things. You'll be surprised what they dredge up. Fine. Then we'll fight them tooth and nail. I mean, what are the rules here? It is what is in the best interest of the child. Which is subject to interpretation. Judges can't read minds. They like tangible evidence. Great. Up until this year, Willie has spent nearly his entire life with me. Now that is pretty darn tangible. And that has changed. It's easier for a judge to look at who is going to be home with the child. How does he know who has the closest emotional connection? So being a mother is just a matter of milk and cookies after school? There are judges on the bench that still believe in Ozzie and Harriet. And daycare is synonymous with neglect. 
How much is this going to cost? Well, I just finished a case that ran 14 grand. $14,000? Unless you and Ted can find a compromise and stay out of court. I wouldn't count on it. And you're going to have to agree on a custody evaluator. A what? It's a psychologist. He'll interview both of you, he'll dig around in your past, and he'll make a recommendation to the judge. I can just see Ted talking to a shrink. You just be careful what you say. Don't assume anything. From now on, Ted and Claire are the enemy. Hi. Hi. Thanks for agreeing to come. Hi, you folks about ready to order? Uh, just coffee. Okay. Look, Ted. Let's not go to court. Just tell me what it is you want. No. Don't want our son wasting precious hours of his childhood in daycare. I want to know that when he finishes school, he has a mommy waiting for him at home. All right. Suppose I switch to nights. You leave him at night, but you won't let him move in with us where he'd be a part of a family. Look, Ted, I'm trying to find a compromise. Suppose he goes to your house after school, and then I pick him up when I get off work. Abby, you're looking at what works for you. I'm trying to do what's best for Willie. I don't know what you want me to do. I can't afford to quit my job. Well, I have a proposal. I'm willing to pay you alimony if you'll stay home. So I can be under your thumb for the rest of my life. You can't afford to pay me what I make. I'd have to give up my apartment. Well, that's what Claire did. That's what Claire did after her divorce. She managed on what her husband gave her. Sure, it was tough, but she was willing to make certain uh, sacrifices in her lifestyle to be there for her kids. Was this Claire's idea to offer me money? It's not personal, Abby. No? I take the alimony and then what? You get to tell me what time Willie gets up. We can work these issues out. Let's not get hung up on the small stuff, okay? Suppose I wanted to move. Where? Anywhere. Anywhere could be a problem. Am I allowed a love life? If you mean Willie's teacher. His name is Eric. I would expect that you'd remember that you're a mother. Precisely my point. Look, Abby, I didn't come here to play games. I came here with a serious offer. And I'm saying there are strings attached. I take it you're not interested. This is pointless. I should have listened to my lawyer when he told me not to talk to you. That's my last offer, Abby. Well, thank you, but no thank you. In the three years that we have been divorced, I have become an independent person with independent ideas just like you. I am not ready to have you looking over my shoulder every time I want to buy a new dress. Not even if it means being home with your son. Our son, of whom we are both very proud. And I've been doing a damn good job with him. Now, why would you want to screw that up? Tell me, Abby. After Willie was born, why were you so damn stubborn about going back to work? Oh, Ted. You've got the nice house and the nice wife, so now it's convenient for you to have Willie back in your life. You're selfish, Ted. This is not about what's good for Willie. This is about you. I don't want you turning him into your little man. He's just a kid. Arthur, go away. How soon can you get here? I need you in surgery. Emergency C-section. You sure you can't find someone else? There must be someone. It's Patty Miller. Mm. She asked for you. Wait, Arthur, I can't come in. I've got Willie. There's no one I can call at this hour. Bring him with you. We'll find him a bed. It's very quiet here tonight. Willie? Annie? Annie, you need Mommy at the hospital for an emergency cesarean? Oh, the lady has a heart condition. Is she gonna die? I hope not, sweetie.
don't know how long this is going to take, so I need you to be a good boy and go to sleep here, okay? Mm -hmm. Would you like to sleep in a real hospital bed? Mm -hmm. Arthur's waiting. You have to get into greens and scrub. You must be Willie. I've heard all about you. My name is Lucy. Lucy's going to show you where you can sleep, and then I'm going to come in in a minute and tuck you in, okay? Here's his stuff, just in case. Okay. Come on. Now, if you need something, you just push this button, and I'll be right in. Now listen to your heart. You look funny, Mom. As soon as I finish, I'm going to come and wake you up and take you home again. You think you can go back to sleep? I'll try. Okay. <laughs> I made a decision, Arthur. I can't take the job. We hired a psychologist. I'm being evaluated tomorrow. It must be possible for you to be a good nurse and a good mother at the same time. I can't take it on, Arthur. I'm at my limits. The hospital will lose a good nurse supervisor. I know. But Willie only has one mom. I never had to choose between my kids and my career. You know what I need? I need a wife. Is my mommy in there? Come with me. drives the helicopter and takes pictures. What? When I grow up, I want to be a nurse who takes pictures and drives the helicopter. The fact that you're a working mother yourself is a big plus to me. Why is that? Well, because the central issue of this fight over Willie's custody is that I choose to work. Choose to or have to? Both. I can't afford not to. But even if I could, I love my work. I think it makes me a better person, and I certainly think it makes me a better mother.
I understand there have been some problems in school. <sighs> Nothing serious. One day he didn't want to go to class. I have a written report here from Mr. Donovan. You don't think that Willie is a troubled child? Troubled? I'd probably say confused. Conflicted. Whenever there's an issue of custody, it's always the child that He was perfectly fine until this whole custody nonsense began. You know, it's often hard for working parents to appreciate the stresses that their children experience. I mean, after all, you're not there for most of his waking time to observe him. Dr. Hernandez, if Willie were unhappy, I would know it. My work is not a problem for him. I have spoken to many, many children. And if you ask any one of them, would you like to have your mommy work or be at home with you? They're all going to say the same thing. We are talking about one child, Willie, my child. I do not want him asked what he prefers or where he wants to live. It is not a choice that a little child should have to make. Do I make myself clear? I understand you perfectly, Mrs. Foreman. Oh, Abby Foreman, do you have a clue what you're doing? You're messing everything up. You've managed to screw up your career and infuriate your ex-husband who is trying to take your son away from you. And now you're falling in love with this teacher. You're a bad mommy. Very, very bad, Mommy. Or maybe you're just nuts. Are you falling in love with this teacher? Are you some kind of peeping Tom? Do you talk to yourself often? No. Mm. Only when I feel very guilty. Uh, I made us something to eat. Mm. Mm. Impressed. <laughs> it was nothing. Oh, I love being pampered. <laughs> One question. Mm -hmm. what, what is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> They're peanut butter boats. <laughs> boats? Yes. The name by which Willie will eat celery. Mm -hmm. First rule of child nutrition, vegetable by any other name tastes better. <laughs> oh, I see. Speaking of Willie, what did you put in the school report that day you got upset? That was just a harmless note saying that I'd had a conference with you and Claire. Why? Dr. Hernandez mentioned it. Listen, sweetheart, I, uh... This, this isn't how I usually do these things, but... I think we should get married. Maybe it'll help your side of the case if there's a father figure here for Willie. Eric, I can't marry you to win a case. <laughs> Did I forget to say that I love you? I adore you. I want to share the rest of my days with you. Oh. I'm so mixed up. I'm not ready. I like my independence. Can't we just be together? You're going to marry me someday. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> Come on, cut! <laughs> I think of Abby as my friend. She's a caring, dedicated person, and... If I needed a nurse, I'd want her to take care of me. But there's a price, and Willie's paying it. 
Of course, she can't see that. What do you mean a price? Well, we got a call from the school one day when Willie didn't show up. They called his mother. They'd gotten the machine. We didn't know what to tell him. When we asked Willie, he said that his mother had taken him with her to the hospital in the middle of the night. So he was too tired to go to school. Seems she just unplugged the phone and went to bed. We chatted down some things that uh, you should be aware of about her. Willie took these photographs himself. He's quite a little photographer. Comes into the dark room with me. Have you spoken to Willie yet? No, I'd like to. But his mother's dead set against it. She's so protective. Abby has a need to control everything. I have no problem if you want to talk to him. It would be wrong not to. I tend to agree. But I can't do it. Not without the mother's permission. Came the rain and washed the spider up. Out came the sun and tried to ball the rain. Okay, into your new house. I want to go. I want to go. But you have to go. When I'm here at mommy's house, daddy's set. But when I'm at daddy's, mommy's all wrong. Hello. Abby? Elliot, did you hear anything? What did you say to Rita Hernandez? She says you denied her contact with Willie. I didn't deny contact. I just simply wanted the ground rules to be clear. Did I blow it? Well, she says under the circumstances, she's done all she can. You and Ted have reached an impasse. The hearing's two weeks from Monday. Guess we see him in court. Elliot, I'll have to call you back. What happened? I was playing with them and they broke. Oh, sweetheart. It's okay, darling. ever finds out I came here, he'll have a fit. So will my lawyer. I'm caught in the middle here, you know. This has to be between you and Ted. This isn't about me and Ted. This wasn't my idea. This is about me and you, and whether I'm a good mother. No one's saying you're not a good mother. You're just stretched too thin. And Ted has as much right to Willie as you do. Ted isn't stretched too thin. It's okay for him to have a career and be a parent, but it isn't okay for me. It's different for a mother. Don't you think I miss the satisfaction of a career? I went to college. I was a well-paid designer. Nobody pays me to be a mother. <laughs> Claire, don't do this. Ben and Sarah need me. Who looks after Willie? An employee of a daycare center. Once we step inside that courtroom, it's out of our hands. Whatever happens can never be fixed. It'll be up to judges and lawyers and evaluators with their legal theories and their stupid rules. Ted's bond with Willie is as deep as yours. We are talking about a little boy here. You're going to tear him to shreds. It's gone too far. There's nothing I can do. It's up to the court to figure out. You take Willie away from me. You gotta tear my heart out, Claire. Please don't do this. You can help me. Please.
problem. Hernandez is recommending that Willie live with Ted McClare. Why am I hearing about this now? My uh, secretary screwed up. I just fired her. Look, Abby, this judge is a real stinker. And he usually goes along with the evaluator's report. Elliot, five minutes. Yes, thank you. Now, they're offering a deal. You get weekends. You don't have to pay child support. That'd be reasonable. Absolutely about. not. I'm not going to give Willie up just like that. Abby, guys in black momos do crazy things. You cannot count on this judge having the wisdom of Solomon. They want Willie to go to a school in Ted's neighborhood. There is nothing wrong with Willie's school. We have Eric's declaration that he's doing just fine. Yeah. I warned you. Ted's playing dirty. And here we have a list of outrageous false allegations he made about you. These are lies. These are all lies. I trusted you as a woman and as a mother. Foreman versus Foreman. I moved to New York City because of my job, but no job is that important. So I took a salary cut and I moved back here to be with my son and to become the kind of father that he needs and deserves. When Willie was small, did his mother work? We argued about it constantly. It was my belief, and it still is, that if uh, mother doesn't have to work, she should be there with her kids, which is one of the things that I admire about Willie's stepmother. Her kids come first. Willie woke up with a fever, and his mother had to go to work, so she left him with me until the next day. It was Halloween, wasn't it? Yes. Abby didn't have time to get him a costume, and she forgot his lunch, so I stepped in for her. Wait a minute. Didn't you volunteer all that? Abby didn't ask for any of it. Uh, counselor, it's not your turn. Rita Edinandis describes Willie as a shy, extremely serious child, overly identified with a cautious and controlling mother. Are you afraid you'll lose control of your child? I try and encourage Willie's self-reliance. You flew into a jealous rage because his father bought him a bicycle, did you not? I was trying to teach him the value uh, of answer money. Answer the question, just, just yes or no, please. I wasn't jealous, no. Counselor? Going back to this one occasion when you took Willie to the hospital with you, who took care of him while you were with the patient? An intensive care nurse who put him to bed and he went to sleep. And you think that a, an intensive care unit is uh, an appropriate place to put a youngster to bed? No, Your Honor. It was an emergency, a life and death situation. H help me to understand. Where does Willie fit in your priorities? I put him first and last and in between all the time. And that includes leaving him at daycare? I'm his mother. I know my son. I mean, if uh, everybody works, uh, who's left to raise the kids? Well, I, I'm going to uh, read the declarations, review the facts, and I'm going to come to a decision that's in the best interest of the child. When I've reached the decision, I'll let you know. tell you this except to just tell you I got the letter from the judge he gave custody to Ted why because you work Claire doesn't 
No, he didn't say it that way, but that's what tipped the balance. You got him every other weekend and for a month in the summer. Is there anything else you need to tell me? Yes. You've been ordered to pay them child support. What? How much? 225 a month. <sighs> and uh, one more thing. They want him tomorrow. Tomorrow's his birthday. They agreed to wait till 4 o'clock. I'm sorry. Can I see my cake? Really, sweetheart? We have to talk. Okay. How much does a helicopter cost? A whole lot. I got a whole lot of pennies. Listen, honey, okay? Do you remember when we talked about custody? Well, the judge decided that it would be a good idea for you to go and live with Daddy. How come? Well, he decided that it was Daddy's turn to keep you and Mommy's turn to borrow. But you said I didn't have to move. I know I said that. I was wrong. Daddy and Mommy are going to share you, but you're going to live with Daddy and Claire. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. The best I could, sweetheart. There's still the appeal. Willie. I need to make it easier for him. Not harder. You're like the mother before Solomon. King Solomon in the Bible. Solomon had to decide between two women both claiming to be mother of the same baby, so... He asked for a sword, said he'd divide the baby in half, give half to each woman. I don't want to hear the rest of this. The one said okay. But the other woman, she refused to let them hurt the baby. Said, let the other woman take the kid. And that's how Solomon knew who the true mother was.
It's almost time. I better go help him. You don't have to take everything, Willie. It doesn't all fit in. Listen, honey. You're still going to be coming back to spend every other weekend and part of the summer here. This is still your home. Even when you're not here with me, that's not going to change. You're going to be awful lonely here without me. Maybe you and Alec will get married and get another baby. Oh, Willie. Come here. No one can ever replace you. You're my Willie. I know this seems awfully hard right now. But we're going to make it work. You'll see. Is there anything that I can do to make it OK? I think I'd like to keep my pennies here. Will you take care of them for me? Yes, sweetie. What about your worms? I think I had them long enough. It's time for these guys to go back to where they belong. weekend. 